Hi there, how are you again? In my last video, I told you I'll be showing you how you can cr easily create a virtual tour for your WordPress website. By that I mean how to create amazing virtual tours like this one. So once you have downloaded and installed the plugin from either WordPress.org or from RigsTheme.com, uh, next thing you need to do is you need to activate the plugin and your plugin should be on your dashboard like this. So now let's get down onto how you can use this plugin. So you can see it has three options, get started, which is the overview you're looking at. And you can see it says the second option called tours. If you click on that, it's going to take you to this page, which has the list of all the tours that you've created. As you can see, I've created a tour called a test. So any tools you create will be listed over here. Now to create a new tour, you gotta go to add new tour, the third option under WPBR. Once you click on that, it's gonna take you to this page. Now the first thing you do is you need to give a title to this. So I'll just name it demo. Now you can see it has three tabs, general, scenes, and hotspot. Now under general settings, the first option says auto load. Now this is the option which if you turn on, then whenever the page is loaded the virtual tour will automatically be ready a customer can directly start navigating through the uh, virtual tour but if it's turned off you will ask the customer to click on it before they can navigate through it so basically if i reload my page you see it says click to load panorama it's because my auto load uh, option is turned off if i turn it on then whenever the page would load this is how it would look directly now the second option you see it says show controls. If it's turned off, it will not show the controls and if it's turned on, it will show the controls. Now let me just show you what controls I'm talking about. As you can see in this virtual tour at the top left corner it says plus, minus and there's a box. So this control is what I'm talking about. The plus is for zoom in, the minus is for zoom out and the box is to create a full screen view you can click on the box the second time to turn it back to normal now if you turn on the show controls this options will show if you turn it off this options will not show but nevertheless uh, a person can also navigate through this page using his mouse uh, if he double clicks it will zoom in if he double clicks again it will zoom out he can also use his keyboard like right now I'll be using my keyboard I can move about the keys to move up down left right I can use plus button on my keyboard to zoom in and minus to zoom out so a customer can navigate through it using his mouse keyboard or this controls now the next option you see is called default scene ID now every scene you create you need to assign an ID to it for uh, by scene I mean each and every location so as you can see this is one scene if I go to a second location, it's going to be called a second scene. So every scene you create, you need to assign it with the scene ID. Now by default scene ID is the place where you need to uh, input the scene ID of that scene which you want to be loaded at first. So whenever the website is loaded, as you can see, when I reload my page, every time this is the scene that's being loaded because this is the scene which I assigned as the default scene. So this is where you need to put in the ID of the scene which you want as the default scene ID. And the last option you see it's scene fade duration. Now the scene fade duration is the time it takes to trans uh, for the transition from one scene to another. This is calculated in milliseconds. So for this image I have uh, put it in as 1000 milliseconds which means about one second. So if I click on to go, go to a second scene it takes about one second to transfer so that's the purpose of scene fade duration now the next step is to learn how to create a scene so this is something i'll be showing you in the next video thank you